Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at weight transfer. Weight transfer is when a car's weight moves around its roll center, when it's braking, turning or accelerating. Basically, the weight moves in the opposite direction to the car. Due to the suspension, the weight around the car is constantly moving. So if you imagine a set of scales under each tire, turn the car right, the car's weight will move over to the left and increase the weight over the left hand tires. As we discussed in the last tutorial on grip, the more that you increase the vertical load or the weight into a tire, the more grip it has. So to better understand how weight moves around the car, we have a few diagrams here. As you can see, we have a right hand corner here on this diagram with four stages. Um, arriving at the corner at a constant speed, so we're neither accelerating or decelerating and we're not turning at all. Number two is where we're completely on the brakes in a straight line. Number three is where the car's turning at its maximum and it's at a constant speed once again just before we get back on the accelerator. And number four is when the car's again in a straight line and accelerating completely out of the corner. So as you can see here by my fantastic drawings, at point number one here, the platform of the car is completely flat. The grip is balanced evenly through each tire. At point number two, where we're braking as hard as we possibly can, the front suspension is compressed and a lot of the car's weight has moved forwards and we call this dive. At point three, where the car's turning as much as it possibly can, but it's neither decelerating nor accelerating, the car's weight has moved all the way to the outside tires and we call this roll as you can see here. Then the car travels out the corner and once uh, it's in a straight line again, the driver will be flat out on the accelerator and the rear of the car will compress, the springs at the back will compress and we call this squat. Now as I just mentioned, the amount of vertical load or the weight going through a tire affects how much grip it has. So you can imagine that when we're accelerating, when we're braking, when we're turning, the grip for each tire is increasing or decreasing by a different amount. So to explain that, we have a few diagrams just here. And they relate again to the right hand corner that you can see here. So point one, we're arriving at the corner again at a constant speed. And what we've done here is we've given each tire a, a, a level of grip, a, 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 a grip um, unit, if you will. So each tire has 25 grip units and the total grip at this point is 100. Then when we get on the brakes, the front suspension compresses, the weight moves to the front of the car when it's in dive and because of this, the grip level at the front of the car increases and for argument's sake we've said this is 30 and it takes it away from the rear of the car which is now 15. So it's important to understand that because this grip has moved forwards, the front now has lots of grip when you're on the brakes and the rear is up in the air and feeling quite light. So if you were to turn the car into the corner at this point, it would be completely unbalanced. The grip is unbalanced because there's a lot more grip at the front of the car. So if you turn the car into the corner at this point, you would likely spin out of control. Then we come off the brakes, we turn the car into the corner, all of the weight moves to the outside of the car, and again, we give the outside tires a lot more grip than the inside. Once again, the outside tires have got a grip level of 30, while the inside tires have got a grip level of 15. Now, this is why you can run over a lot of curb or even the grass sometimes with the inside tires when you're going uh, through an apex because they're unloaded on the inside and so they're not actually doing that much work. Then we start to open up the steering wheel, we get on the gas pedal and the rear of the car sits down, the rear suspension compresses and the car squats. At this point, we've given the, uh, the rear tires a grip level of 30 and the front tires 
only have a grip level of 15. So this is why sometimes when you get on the throttle, you can actually begin to understeer in the car because again, the grip balance is uneven and the, the, the car's unbalanced at this point. So as you may have noticed from these diagrams, we also have the total grip level um, according to what the transfer is, weight transfer is like. So when the car's static or at a constant speed with no turning, the grip level is 100. However, as soon as you transfer any weight, whether it be on the brakes, turning or acceleration, the total grip available reduces somewhat. So you can see here, for argument's sake, we've put 90 as the total grip level. 30, 30, 15 plus 15 equals 90. So when we're actually um, driving on the circuit, what we want to do is to reduce the weight transfer as much as possible, thereby keeping the total amount of grip available as high as we possibly can. Now, what do we do to decrease the amount of weight transfer? Well, it's always the same story. We need to be as smooth as we possibly can with the steering, with the acceleration, and when we're coming off the brakes into the corner. As I mentioned in the last tutorial, imagine trying to push somebody over. If you push them really hard, it's likely that they'll fall over. Whereas if you push them slowly, you can still put the same amount of force into them, but they'll likely remain standing. And it's the same with your driving. If you approach the corner and turn in really, really hard, you'll spike the weight transfer and the car will slide actually earlier than if you increase the steering angle nice and gently and move the weight to the outside of the car nice and smoothly. So a good driver will not only be smooth, but they'll also change their driving style depending on the balance of the car to try and shift the grip around to get the most out of the tire at all phases through the corner. So to better explain this, let's give you a direct example. So imagine we're coming down to a corner, we get on the brakes and the front of the car dives. We then come off the brakes and the front of the car sits up again. We turn the car into the corner and hopefully we've got a, a well-balanced grip level around the car. That's why we get off the brakes, so we transfer some of the grip to the rear of the car again. And we turn the car into the corner and then accelerate back out of the corner. However, the driver's done a few laps and they can feel at this point in the circuit, the rear of the car is actually a little bit light and it, it, it's limiting the car from going into the corner. So they're braking, the nose is diving, they go to turn in and the rear feels like it's about to slide. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is that there's too much grip at the front of the car and not enough grip at the rear. So a good driver will think, well, how can I change this? How can I stop the rear being the limiting factor about how much speed I can carry into this corner. Well, the best thing to do in this situation is to get on the brakes and then come off the brakes a little bit earlier so the car picks itself up again and we transfer some of the weight to the rear of the car and therefore some of the grip. When we do that, then we can turn in the car's better balanced and we have more total grip as we're going into the corner. So that's a really quick insight into how to manipulate the weight transfer of a car to increase your grip levels. Uh, we're gonna go into this in more detail in later tutorials. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please get in touch. If not, I'll see you next time.